CataractCoach.com, infant lensectomy technique for babies with congenital cataracts. Our guest surgeons are Dr. Harshad Patel and Dr. Simon Fung. Dr. Fung's at UCLA and Dr. Patel was his fellow. And this video was provided by Dr. Fung. So you can see there's that central opacity, obviously a very significant cataract. And this is something a little unusual, a superior rectus suture to help fixate the eye. But you know, the baby is under general anesthesia. But if you want to be extra sure, I suppose we can do this as well. Here's making the first incision, a paracentesis. Good incision. I like how the limbal vessels are barely nicked. You need to have some vascularity in there in order to have good sealing of the incision for long term. Tripan blue dye using an air bubble as well. Nice technique. The tripan blue dye obviously will help with visualization, but also importantly, it does make the capsule a little bit less elastic. Otherwise, these capsules are very elastic. So now the viscoelastic going inside, that looks really good. And you can see there's a reasonable stain there of the anterior lens capsule with that tripan blue dye. Here's the second incision. Again, looks like using an MVR style blade right at the limbus, barely nicking the limbal vessels. That goes in very nicely. Now, instead of a bimanual technique, this is a bimanual technique of sorts, using an anterior chamber maintainer to keep the eye inflated and now using a vitrector to go inside, looks like a 23 gauge of a tractor, to go and open the lens capsule. Now, there are many ways of doing this. You can do this technique, which is just using the vitrector directly. You're not going to be able to tear a capsule axis in a baby. The capsule is way too elastic for that. So instead, you're going in with the vitrector, and this is going to make an opening or central hole there in the capsule, and then that can be enlarged. Very important to save capsular tissue here. We need to have a good area of support for placement of a future IOL. There's another technique from Ken Nischel, which is the two incision push-pull technique, which is simply making two small incisions in the lens capsule, like an equal sign, and then grabbing one and pushing it, and grabbing the other one and pulling it towards you, and that tends to open up into a very reasonable capsule opening that's pretty round due to the elasticity here. But this is another technique that works very well. You can see just taking your time and using the vitrector. So important when you're using this protractor to understand the difference in the settings. Now there is the IA cut setting, which is irrigation position one, position two is aspiration, and position three is the cutter. And that may be the useful technique for removing the lens material. But in this baby, we're also gonna have to open the poster capsule and do an anterior vitrectomy. And for the anterior vitrectomy, you wanna be on the anterior vitrectomy mode, which is position one irrigation, position two, the vitreous cutter and position three would then be aspiration. So nice opening here, very conservative, and just taking your time on this. We've gotta do a beautiful job. These babies are so young, this baby's gonna live 100 more years, and you want your surgery to last as, that long, to pass the test of time. So being very careful here. Now, when you're going out to the periphery to clean up any of the lens cortex or lens material that's out in the periphery, how do you avoid damaging the caps or bag? Well, I can tell you a trick that I recommend, which is you still use the same instrument here, that anterior vitrector, but on your machine, your Fago machine, hit the IA mode for cortex removal. Then your foot pedal now only has two positions, position one for irrigation, two for aspiration. That'll allow you to go out there in the periphery and not have the fear of inadvertently pushing your pedal down too far and going to position three and making some cuts. You don't want to do that. So again, Key here is taking your time. Also, make sure you keep in touch with the anesthesiologist to say, hey, here's how much more time I'm anticipating for my case. And especially with these small patients that are under 10 pounds, we have to be very careful with the anesthesia and the systemic issues. So now getting out and right through it and gonna open up that posterior capsule as well. Nice technique here, you can see the cutter tip moving. And then you can also try with a little bit lower cutting speed like you see here, and that sometimes can be very helpful. So we still wanna clean up a lot more of this. Remember the lens material is very pro-inflammatory, so you wanna be able to control that by really cleaning up that lens material. And it looks like some of this was scarring on that posterior capsule, so that's being opened up beautifully. And this is gonna be a really nice result. So a beautiful job here. I'm really thankful for Dr. Patel and Dr. Fung for sending over this video.
they show the expertise. Now, Dr. Fung is a faculty member at UCLA, and he specializes in pediatric ophthalmology and obviously has a very large experience doing these types of uh, infantile lensectomy cases. So we're happy to have his expertise on board. And so slow and steady, removing all this stuff, really getting a nice opening here. And remember, you're going to end up putting an IOL here. And typically going to be in this capsular bag, or maybe you're going to, or if you're going to be putting it in with the haptics of the sulcus, the optic in the bag, or, in the, or the behind the rex opening. There are many ways of fixing a lens here, but you want something that's secure. So that's now at the end here, a beautiful opening. So great job. Now, I've had an interest in this for a long time. Back 14 years ago in 2007, I worked with a doctor named Federico Velez, another pediatric ophthalmologist, and we described 25-gauge retina instruments to do congenital cataract surgery in infants. That was 14 years ago. And we made even smaller incisions because we did 25-gauge instead of 23, and we did a bimanual approach instead of that anterior chamber maintainer. Now, at the end here, suturing the incision, putting in some triumph syndrome, that's important to stain any vitreous that's in the anterior segment, which looks like there's none, but also to quell inflammation. That's a healthy dose, though. I may have put a little less. And now the suturing of the incisions, important, even though it's a tiny, small, little pairs and pieces, you think, well, I can just hydrate it. No, that's not going to be sufficient. The cornea has way too much elasticity. You are going to absolutely need to suture those two pairs and pieces. And I'd recommend doing something like tenovicral, Therefore, it'll fall out on its own. You won't have to go back to remove them. If you are going to go back to the operating room for another exam under anesthesia, maybe do an, you know, some sort of aphagic refraction and as well, then maybe you could put the nylons in and remove it at that time. But here, suturing that up is very important. And you want to get these at appropriate tension, not too much a wrinkling there in the cornea. And this baby will have a very nice outcome. So these babies obviously have to be followed up very closely. Remember, you're just starting the journey by doing this surgery. You're not curing the whole problem. Now the baby's aphagic, and you've got the issue of amblyopia to worry about. And this patient's going to have to have a contact lens for the first year or two of life, and then finally at some point get an eye well placed, and then you can get watched for years to come for the treatment and monitoring of that amblyopia that's undoubtedly a threat. So very important to remember that you are just beginning the journey with this baby. At the end here, some subconj, maybe subtenons, antibiotic, and steroid. And now that looks pretty darn good. So beautiful result. Thank you guys for sharing this video. Always a pleasure to have you contribute to cataractcoach.com.